This is a video demonstration of the powerful LEAP motor monitoring system. In addition to being a demonstration of this particular system, it's also a shining example that highlights the powerful and unique features of the LEAP wireless sensor system for industrial applications. This particular sensor has multiple sensors per transceiver node. It leverages powerful edge computing, including high-speed vibration sampling and FFT data analysis, and also has a daisy-chained CAN bus that can support, support multiple powerful sensors, all on one daisy-chained cable. Now, we call this sensor the motor monitor sensor, but it can be used in many applications. Motors is one of the most common. But this sensor was really designed for rotating equipment to monitor the three main variables or parameters that are predictive to a motor failure or any type of rotating equipment failure, such as bearings or gearboxes. Now, the three things that this sensor does and monitors is one, temperature, and we can, off, we can monitor temperature either through a thermocouple or through our vibration sensor, two, vibration, and three, current draw. By monitoring those top three predictors of an oncoming motor failure or rotational equipment failure, the LEAP wireless sensor gives weeks or months of advance notice to an oncoming motor failure that allows predictive maintenance to be done to prevent the failure. The LEAP motor monitor or rotational equipment monitor comes in multiple versions. This one uh, supports three motors with three thermocouples, uh, which uh, there's other options for temperature, which we'll talk about, uh, three vibration sensors, and three current transformers or amp clamps to monitor the current going to the motor. There's two versions of our motor monitor or rotational equipment monitor. This one is the three motor monitor that has three temperature sensors, three vibration sensors, and three current transformers or amp clamps. Another version is our single motor monitor that has one each of those different types of sensors. One of the most powerful features of the LEAP motor monitor system is this vibration sensor. Now this vibration sensor comes in different uh, enclosures that can be mounted on the motor or gearbox or other e rotating equipment with uh, magnets or screws or epoxy. Inside here is a three axis accelerometer and we edge compute the data from the accelerometers. The accelerometers are sampled at five kilohertz for about three seconds and then we edge compute that data into the three most common or most effective predictors of motor failures, which is an increase in RMS acceleration, RMS velocity, or peak acceleration. Those parameters are calculated on board using an FFT and other algorithms to output these most powerful predictors of failure due to increases in vibration. When the vibration sensor is used in a, on rotational equipment, the three-axis accelerometer in, in here is actually converted to an axial vibration, which is parallel to the shaft, and also a radial or um, uh, rotational vibration. And then when the uh, motor is checked, we get six parameters, both axial and radial, and then inside of each one of those, we get RMS acceleration, RMS velocity, and peak acceleration. RMS acceleration weighs the higher frequencies and tends to flag or find problems at higher vibration frequencies. RMS velocity tends to find problems at the lower frequencies, and peak acceleration tends to find jarring type uh, vibration which is typically due to bearing failure or chip teeth. By installing the LEAP vibration sensors and monitoring over time, a baseline can be found for each of the six parameters for vibration. And as a motor or a bearing or a gearbox starts to fail, 
one or several of those six parameters typically will show a significant increase, 50 to 100% increase in vibration. That is an excellent predictor that typically gives weeks or months of advance notice of a problem happening that will eventually turn into a motor failure. This gives the maintenance staff ample time to plan and execute maintenance to prevent unplanned downtime. This vibration sensor has other very powerful features. Uh, first of all, it is set up on a CAN bus, which means that we can actually daisy chain up to 250 of these sensors on one cable in series and have very reliable communication due to its uh, differential um, digital serial communication. Uh, it's very immune to uh, noise in a noisy industrial plant and allows uh, one transceiver node to monitor multiple vibration sensors. The other nice thing about this vibration sensor module is it also includes a temperature sensor and overheating motors or gearboxes or bearings is also an excellent predictor of oncoming failure that can be prevented when tipped off by the LEAP sensor. All right, we've talked about vibration. One of the other major predictors in uh, rotational equipment failure is temperature. Gearboxes, motors, uh, bearings, other rotational equipment tends to heat up before it has a catastrophic or unplanned failure. Now in the LEAP vibration sensor that's connected to the transceiver node, we have a temperature sensor in here. So you get both temperature and vibration with this one connected, CAN bus connected, daisy chained module. Now, sometimes uh, many of our clients want to put a temperature sensor at a different location than the vibration sensor. And when you want to do that, we have an option to connect a K-type thermocouple to the transceiver node and place that thermocouple exactly where you want it, with a magnet or a screw it on or epoxy on the thermocouple and get the temperature at the most critical place on that piece of rotating equipment. The third most effective way to predict oncoming motor failures or failures in rotational equipment is an increase in current draw to the motor that's driving that piece of equipment. To monitor that, we have an optional amp clamp, a uh, split core amp clamp that quickly and easily installs on the, the uh, wires going to the motor and can monitor the current draw. Typically, a change in current draw over time is a great predictor of something changing in that system and could be very indicative of an oncoming failure. All right, it's time for the demonstration of our LEAP wireless motor monitor system that features vibration, temperature, and amp clamp current draw. Uh, to set things up here, I didn't have a 100 horsepower motor, uh, but we've uh, found a substitute instead, uh, just a standard box fan that will create uh, some nice vibration at different uh, speeds. And uh, we've got our amp clamp here. Uh, it installs in just seconds uh, over the wire. Uh, so very easy to install there. Uh, the transceiver node is going to take the data from uh, the vibration sensor. We're going to sample that at 5 kilohertz and process that into the six most common uh, vibration parameters for predictive fa uh, failure uh, prediction. And uh, the temperature sensor in here is going to be red. The current draw is going to be red. That's going to go to our uh, LEAP motor monitor transceiver. And then that's going to wirelessly transmit to our gateway. Now, our, this is our standard LEAP gateway. It can support uh, 200 uh, different transceivers, with each transceiver having multiple uh, sensors. And this uh, gateway can then transmit or pass the data uh, that it receives over the air to a number of different uh, uh, computers. And for this demonstration, I'm just gonna use my laptop computer, but it, can, it also has an API that can pass the data to um, another, another computer system. It has Modbus, DMP3, so it can pass the data to a plant monitoring system or a PLC. So the system is very powerful and easy to integrate 
with existing legacy monitoring plant software. All right, let's do our simulation with the motor. Um, I've, I've got my laptop here. I'll do a screen share on it. I just want to point out that the uh, transceiver node is transmitting to the gateway. Uh, in a plant environment, those two thing, these two devices could be several hundred feet away. And uh, this could be connected to a PLC or plant monitoring software. Um, let's, uh, let's start up the motor and see what happens. Uh, you can see on my screen right now, we've got uh, zero amps of current draw. And uh, these numbers are quite low. Everything's below uh, uh, one. And um, also we have our temperature sensor here that is uh, part of our um, um, vibration sensor that's attached to our um, rotating equipment. Um, all right, let's uh, turn the uh, fan on low and see what happens. Now, one thing I'll point out is that uh, I have this uh, sampling at a pretty, pretty fast rate, about every 10 seconds. In a plant, you probably wouldn't do that. Uh, probably just checking the motor every 15 minutes or hour is adequate. Okay, um, so at our low fan setting, we've got uh, 0.47 amp uh, draw. And you can see how all these numbers have gone up. This one in particular was uh, below one, and uh, now it's almost five. And the radial uh, has uh, actually uh, changed dramatically. So the radial is uh, parallel to the shaft of the motor, and axial is the rotational uh, vibration of the motor. Uh, so now let's turn it up to uh, full speed and see what happens. So uh, we'll give it 10 seconds to update. Uh, this is really shaking actually. This fan is really out of balance. Um, but it makes a very dramatic effect. Um, so there our current went up from about 0.47 to 0.66. And uh, you can see that our other uh, vibration readings have uh, risen dramatically, some more than others, depending on the type of vibration. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, turn it back down again. I might pay attention to this one, this 23.6, and see how it changes as, a, as we go down to uh, the lowest fan speed. Um, let's give it 10 more seconds to uh, update. And then when we're done here, we'll do a download of the data. So there, it, it dropped dramatically from about 22 to about 7. So you can get a really good feel for um, how, uh, what, a, what a really powerful predictive tool this is to uh, monitor rotating equipment and detect uh, a change in vibration or current draw or temperature that you would never uh, probably notice uh, on a daily basis. Um, so I'm going to now turn the fan off and uh, just do one more quick little demonstration of the capabilities of the system. Um, we can actually uh, download the reading. So we've selected the uh, motor monitor here. I'm just going to go to device, uh, download readings, and I'm just going to pick today. Um, I cleared the memory earlier so the data set wouldn't be really huge. And um, so now it's compiling the data into a CSV file, and uh, we'll open it with Excel here. And uh, you'll see that it gives us all of our data. Um, you can trend it and graph it. Uh, we've got timestamps, and you can see here, our, here's our, our amp clamp. Uh, you can see when we started the test, uh, the, uh, the current draw goes up. This is now rounding it to, uh, to, the, uh, to, to, to an integer number. And uh, you can see right here the big jump and vibration across all of the different parameters. Uh, our temperature sensor is staying the same uh, pretty much throughout the test. So I hope this was helpful in uh, having you get a feel for the powerful features of the LEAP wireless sensor system, its ability to support multiple sensors, its ability to do powerful edge computing, including FFT of uh, five kilohertz vibration data, and its ability to leverage a CAN bus um, to support multiple uh, daisy chain sensors. Take a look at the rest of our website 
uh, we would encourage you to click the Contact Us button and talk to an expert about your particular application and how we can help. Thanks for watching our video.